Oh boy, we got a crash. Can you guess what is happening here? Hi everyone, today we're going to talk about keypads and why they are so important to build dynamic code that depends on properties and not values. Let's get started. My name is Pete and this, this is Swift and Tips. Okay, let's start with a simple example. We have a list of people with name and ages. We just want to save all the people's name in a variable. For that, we apply a map function to people array passing the value of name. That will iterate over the people array to get only the name value and return the new array with those strings. This code is not bad at all, but think about it. We are extracting the value from the property using a closure that maybe here is straightforward, but in other situations, this become verbose just for one property. Would it be great if we just make a reference to the property itself without creating a closure? Actually, yes, we can do that. That's the work made by keypads. Let's replace this closure using a keypad expression. And voila, we got the same result, but without needing a closure. Um, kind of. Hold on, hold on. But what is a keypad exactly? A keypad is an expression that makes reference to the property of a type and not the value. Think about it. Most of the time, we are just looking for what is inside of the properties, what is the value. But there are situations in which we don't care about the values, we just care about the properties. And what you saw earlier is just one example of the power of keypads. Before continue with more, let's first talk about the anatomy of a keypad. A keypad is composed by four elements, a backslash operator, the type name, or sometimes called root, a dot, and the path or the actual property. In the previous example, type name is person. And path is just the property we want to make reference. Let's use name again. And as you can see, Swift compiler understands this syntax perfectly. And now that we have our keypad expression, we can even save it into a variable. But why this is useful? Well, if we go back to the previous example, it turns out that Swift is transforming the keypad expression into a hidden closure with a subscript that make reference to the property. Let's see that. All objects in Swift contain this special subscript to pass a keypad reference. And this is actually the real type of a keypad. Keypad is a class with two generic arguments, the root of type name, that is person in our example, and the path, which in name property is a string. In the subscript argument, we are waiting a generic value because we could accept any property that comes from person. And here, Swift can identify that type is already person. That's why in this example is explicit. If we pass name property keypad to the subscript, we got the same result as before. All this syntax with subscript is automatically handled by Swift. And the first example is normally the way to go to make reference to properties using keypads instead of closures. But it's good for you to know what's happening under the hood. You may wonder why in the first example we don't have any explicit type here. Well, that's because Swift is capable to infer that. Infer that we are talking about a specific type and then you just provide the property. For example, here, name property is not capable to figure out what is the root type. We need to write it explicitly. But if we add the explicit type of keypad, we can omit the type. Let's see that. There you go. Now Swift understand 
that your type is person. Awesome. Actually, if you are using Swift UI and following Swift and tips, you might have seen this syntax already. For each needs an ID to identify all unique views that will be rendered in the screen. And believe it or not, ID is requesting a keypad. In this case, a piece of element provided by data and something that of course is confirming ID. In this example, person struct is not identifiable. And then we need to explicitly say what property will work as an ID. That's why we are using person's name as the ID, just making reference to the name's property and not the actual value contained in a property. This is really cool. And without keypads, we will have to do something like this with closures. This is less convenient than keypads, of course. By the way, here we are using the type explicitly, but it's not necessary because people contains an array of person and Swift knows that. Also, let's see another cool thing about keypads. Let's refactor the code to use name array instead of people. In this case, names is an array of a string. Property name is not found there. That's why the error. In cases when we need to make reference not only to one property, but the whole object, we can use the identity keypad. Yeah, using self instead of a specific property, we indicate that keypad is making reference to the whole object. Amazing, right? We will see this syntax so frequently in Swift. Okay, let's now build something really cool with keypads. Let's build a function that accepts an object of any type and a keypad of a property string and transform that string into an uppercase string. Let's see that. We need then two parameters, the object and the keypad reference. Since that we don't care about the object type, we will use a generic type. The only thing we care is that object containing a string property. In this case, we are declaring our keypad of type keypad class, and then we need to provide two generic parameters here. The root or type name is T because it is whatever type we are providing in the object parameter. But in the second one, we want that any property containing a string type. Finally, we need to update the current string to one that is uppercase. For that, we will use again the subscript keypad. And we're going to do the modification right away here in the function. So the only thing we need is update or current object to the same version, but with uppercase. Nice. But we got a problem. Our keypad is a read-only keypad. Yeah, it turns out that exists five type or keypads. Keypad type is a read-only keypad. That means you can only get the information of that property, but not doing any mutation. If you need to mutate the property, then you need to use writable keypad. Let's update our keypad type to a writable version. Okay, now we are facing more issues. Object is a constant. In order to make it mutable, we need to use inout in the parameter. With inout, we can modify an object that is outside of the scope of the function, just receiving the reference of the object, regardless of being class or struct. We will explain more details about it in a future video. For now, our method is ready. Let's test it. We will use person1 and we will use person.name keypad. Hmm, another error. We are getting this error. Our keypad is not recognized as a writable keypad, 
and it suggests to force a cast. Hmm. Okay, let's do that and see what happened. Oh boy, we got a crash. Can you guess what is happening here? The error is not super descriptive. Xcode is giving us a solution, but it was terrible. This is a great example to never force a cast if you are not pretty sure about what's going on. Catastrophic issues could happen to your users. Let's go to the top. What is happening is just that we declare name has a constant with let. And of course, that's avoid mutation. Hmm. Next time, instead of just forcing a cast, make sure that your keypad is compatible with writable keypad. Okay, let's change this to bar. And right away, you will see that your forecasting is redundant. Let's try one more time. Nice. Our name is not uppercase. And the best is that we have created a function that works with any type, even strings. Voila. We just saw at this point two keypads, the regular keypad and the writable keypad. Let's see really quick the other three types. Writable keypads only works for structs and enum, in other words, value types. If you need to mutate a property from a class, you need a reference writable keypad. This is automatically inferred as a reference writable keypad because it's mutating a property and it's coming from a class. Swift is really smart. If we review the documentation, keypad class inherits from something called partial keypad. Partial keypad is sometimes useful too, in situations when we don't care for a specific property, but all of them coming from the same type, we can use partial keypad. In this example, we are getting all the properties and creating a keypad class to iterate in a loop. We don't care about the specific properties, we just print the respective values inside those properties. Finally, the most generic of all keypads, any keypad. You may get the idea of any keypad. In partial keypad, we don't care about the properties. In any keypad, we don't care about nothing, just something. <laughs> any keypad is a type erased keypad. Any type of keypad can fit here. That flexibility comes with a trade-off. As you can see in the example, we have to identify what is the type to apply the correct keypad, because any keypad cannot provide that info directly. If you notice, reference writable keypad is the most specific of all. Then comes writable keypad, then keypad, partial keypad, and finally, any keypad. If you are using keypads in your projects, please let us know in the comment. We would like to learn more about it. And if you need to understand more about generics or subscripts, I will leave you here two great videos for that. That's all for today, guys. I hope you really enjoyed the video. Thank you so much and have a great day.